Welcome to this report on e-learning at Aoba Japan International School. My name is Paul Fredali. I am the secondary school principal, and I am sharing this with you on behalf of the full pedagogical leadership team. This report reflects on the online learning that we have been conducting over the past four weeks in response to the coronavirus situation prevalent not only in Japan, but around the world. We are not the only school to face this novel set of circumstances. We are, however, the school that is beholden to our students and our families, and we therefore made the best decision that we could given the information that we had, balancing student learning needs against the needs for safety for students, families, and the larger community. We undertook online learning not lightly nor easily, we did so knowing that it would be an iterative process, that we would be able to reflect as we went to make incremental changes as appropriate and required, but that above all it would require sustained effort, particularly from our very hardworking teachers who had to retool entire units and ways of doing things on short notice in support of the students. Thankfully, given our school's background, we were well positioned for success. Our parent organization, Business Breakthrough University, has a long history of innovation, entrepreneurship, and online learning, both in Japan and worldwide. With that background, we were able to undertake a three-year research project with Southern Cross University, which involved analysis of three years of data, resulting in multiple peer-reviewed publications, graduate level training, over three years for all faculty, and the development of bespoke models of online learning. These all came together at rather short notice to support the school's effort in this online learning needed at this time. This is all based, however, on the long-standing emphasis AOBA have always had regarding team-based learning, student agency, and inquiry. The decision to close the school was reached in late February. Within two days, we had a model prepared. The teachers were informed, given some time to prime the pump, so to speak. Students were informed, and we began the following Monday. Throughout the month of March, whilst online learning has been undertaken, we have been clearly observing all that's been going on by asking teachers, families, and students how things are going, gathering evidence, and then analyzing all of this. This is done on a weekly basis. At the end of the month, however, we took the four weeks of information and did a meta-analysis in order to prepare this report and to inform the next iteration of our online learning experience. I'd like to first introduce you to some student engagement and performance information. We queried the teachers each week on the level of engagement. Specifically, we asked them to compare the engagement they saw online compared to what they would have expected in the face-to-face -face setting. As you can see from the chart, the teachers felt that the students were in fact engaged. To triangulate that information, we asked parents a similar question. As you can see, the parents observed an even higher level engagement in their interpretation than the teachers did. This is reassuring as to see the similar patterns between the two stakeholders says that there is clear support for the conclusion that student engagement has remained high. Student engagement is one measure, student performance is another. In the early years and primary school, teachers have conducted over 700 checks every week on what the students have been doing. In early years in primary, this is focused mostly on the level of completion, how much work is being done to an acceptable quality. As you can see, 
over the four weeks, the fully completed work is quite high. It's exceptional, actually. And based on this, we can say with confidence that learning continues as expected in the primary and early years sector. In a similar manner, in secondary, there were over 1,000 face-to-face check-ins with teachers and small groups and individuals of students. During those check-ins, teachers assessed the quality and the amount of learning and work that had been completed and reported back to us. As you can see, it started out well, but improved week on week. That steady shift to the right indicates that performance has increased week on week and that, in fact, results are quite strong. Based on these two pages or slides, we are comfortable in saying that learning is succeeding in our school. We ask parents for feedback on a variety of areas. Taking the four weeks of data and presenting it to you, I'd like to break this down by sector because there are clear divisions to be seen. In the early years, you'll see that the results are fairly mixed regarding comfort, engagement, satisfaction with the learning, and the decisions the school has made. We understand from this data that our youngest learners and their families are the ones who need the most support in this new milieu. And it is our commitment to our youngest learners that we will continue to revise and improve what we do so that those students are adequately supported. Moving into primary school, you'll see a rather noticeable shift in comfort, engagement, satisfaction, and trust in the school's decisions. This pattern is repeated in middle school, but more pronounced. And this carries through to senior school. In addition to the Likert data asking for satisfaction against various criteria, we asked the parents for suggestions, comments, requests. These were often paragraph uh, in nature, paragraph responses in nature, and these were coded into general areas. These are reported below. As you can see in the bottom four rows, assignments that don't require as much parental involvement, increased flexibility for submission deadlines, taking into account family or student stress, and increased one-to-one -one teacher student interaction are at the top of the list for the early years. In the primary years, the top two were to increase real-time student-student interaction and to increase one-to-one -one teacher student interaction. In the middle years, it's different yet again. The top two in this case being gratitude towards Aoba for what's being done, but also a request to increase physical activity or to switch from digital engagements to physical wherever possible to increase the use of physical materials rather than working solely on a laptop. In senior school, there were few requests. Uh, one, however, was to increase student accountability. We've asked the teachers week on week to respond and reflect on their practice, their decision making, their observations. These four statements are examples culled from the teachers' responses. You can see that deep reflection, professional judgment, and experience are reflected in these statements. These represent not just individual reflection, of course, because they have arisen within the context of professional collaboration. Just as our students are based on teams, so are our teachers. 
And so these represent snippets of conversations, if you will, informing on a daily basis decisions teachers made regarding their students, learning, and assessment. We also sought to illustrate the data trends with examples. And so each week we asked teachers to submit screenshots, movies, student work samples to show the variety of engagements and the success stories generated by their students. Here in the early years, you can see a wide range of interactions, of student product, and of platforms and attempts to offer engagements to our students. This continues in the primary years, where you can see a wide range again of both digital and physical engagements using, once again, a variety of platforms. In the middle years, this is extended as the students' sophistication and developmental abilities allow them to branch out into different platforms and different approaches to what they do, ranging from real-time collaborative music to drafting their own creative projects such as manga to recording their physical fitness activities and more. In the GLD, comprising grade 11 and 12, we have another range of platforms tracking devices, monitoring, goal-setting processes, and monitoring of learning. And in our DP, also the last two years of school, we have a similar range where the students have used a wide variety of platforms with their teachers and tools to continue their learning remotely. So based on this, what are we going to do next? Simply put, we're going to respond to our community's needs. We pride ourselves on being a responsive organization. Specific to the sector then, you can see in early years, we are going to increase real-time student-teacher interaction. We are going to decrease, as best as we can, family and student stress, particularly with a taking a flexible approach to submissions and then look at new ways to engage students in ways that perhaps don't involve the parents as much. In the primary years, you'll see that we're going to look at increasing student-teacher interaction and real-time student-student interaction, and once again, decreasing reliance on parental involvement where possible. In the middle years, we're going to increase the diversity of activities, particularly uh, emphasizing non-digital or non-screen time options so that the students don't spend their entire day in front of their laptops. We'll be increasing opportunities for differentiation, extending support, and making sure that the teams and the routines we have in place support student learning even more than they have yet. In the senior years, our efforts at revision will look more at increasing student accountability particularly for our grade 12 students as they wrap up their final year of their secondary career. I'd like to sincerely thank all the families for the trust that they have shown in the school, for the spirit of collaboration and sort of can-do attitude that define who we are at Alba. We take our responsibility to our students very seriously, and as such, it is our commitment and solemn word to you that we will continue to innovate, continue to improve, and continue to put service to our students at the heart of every decision we make. We, like everyone else, hope that this coronavirus situation will wrap up and that we can resume our usual face-to-face -face learning environment. In the event that this is extended, however, we have every confidence that we will be able to provide meaningful learning for your children to minimize the disruption to their education and growth. Thank you all very much.